Okay, in this part of the video, we're going to cover S2 Members API Notifications. It's a very powerful tool, and you can access this page by going to the main S2 Member menu and choosing API Notifications. That'll bring you here, and you'll find these subsections. Now, before I begin, let me clarify, API Notifications are a fairly advanced topic. And in this video, I will have to assume that you are already familiar somewhat with the concept of an HTTP uh, web service connection that occurs silently behind the scene and it will do so in response to a certain event that occurs. Okay, in this case each of these subsections is, re is related to a specific event that occurs within S2 members processing routines. Okay, Now will all of those events fire at once? No. These events fire at different times and possibly depending on how you're using the S2 member plug-in, some of these events may never be fired at all. For example, starting here from sign-up notifications all the way down to refund reversal notifications, all of these cover the core functionality of S2 member, which is to say they cover membership level access. Okay, whereas this one on the bottom is that added layer of functionality we've been referring to in previous videos that has to do only with specific post page transactions. So this event is fired only in response to a buy now transaction that occurs for a specific post or page or for a specific package of posts and pages. So you can see that if you're not using this type of functionality then you will never receive an event. Okay, And on that same token if you're not using membership level access and you're only using this part of the functionality then you'll only receive this event and you won't receive any of these. Okay, so now that we understand the general concept of what an API notification is, okay, we can understand that each of these could be important in different scenarios, and there's, there's, there's only the possibility that you may want to integrate a custom routine with maybe one or two events, or even just one event, okay, the payment notifications being one of the most popular ones to implement. Okay, so I'm going to walk you quickly through <clears throat> what events are fired whenever a new customer signs up. Whenever a new customer goes through PayPal, and only when they go through PayPal to sign up, okay, including free trials, even if you're offering a free trial, so long as they went through PayPal to sign up and you did not send them directly to the registration form, okay, which would be the case if you were, if you're going to offer uh, open registration where you would offer uh, the ability for a free subscriber to get a login to your account, your, your, your website. Okay, that would only trigger a registration notification. It would not trigger a sign-up notification. So a level zero member only triggers registration notifications. It does not trigger this one. Okay, so anytime you have a, a customer that goes through PayPal, they will trigger a sign-up notification. Now if you did not offer a free trial, then that means there will be a payment associated with that sign up. And in that case, almost at the same time, it will also trigger a payment notification. Okay, now the difference between a payment notification and a sign up notification is that sign up notifications are only triggered when a new customer that does not have an existing account with you signs up, and it's only triggered once for each customer, whereas payment notifications could be received multiple times for each customer because if there's a recurring charge associated with their quote unquote subscription then a, an initial payment will be received and then there will be recurring payments received and each time the recurring payment is received that will trigger an additional payment notification. Okay. Now another thing to keep in mind is that when a customer signs up through PayPal and they, they pay you today that triggers this one and then almost immediately triggers this one and then S2 member will redirect them to the registration form where they choose the username and they log in to receive what they paid what they paid for. And at that time, just a few moments later, that will also trigger a registration notification. Okay, so a new paying customer will trigger all three of these. We'll trigger this one, and then this one, and then this one. Okay? And in that order. Almost always in that order. Okay? A new customer that signs up under the terms of a free trial will only trigger this one and this one because there is no payment associated initially with a free trial. 
Now they may they may later trigger a payment notification and after the trial expires and the first charge goes through, then that would trigger a payment notification, as would any future payments that you receive from that customer. Okay, so I think that explains these three important notifications that have to do with registration payments and signups. Okay, and understanding these three, we can now understand these two. Okay, now this one, EOT, stands for end of term. An end of term or deletion is very broad because, for example, if a customer cancels today, but they've already paid for the rest of the month, okay, in other words, if they signed up on January 1st uh, at a current at a rate of $169 a month, but then they cancel in the same month on the 15th of the month, uh, then that does not trigger an EOT. It does not, the EOT is not triggered until the end of that month, which represents the the end of their term that, that they are already paid for. Even though they canceled, the end of term is not processed until the end of the month because they've already paid you $169 for a full month's worth of access. Okay, another thing that can trigger an EOT is if you were to go here to the users panel and manually delete an account, that would also trigger this notification because that is an EOT as well. You're deleting an account. So this is, this is why we label this EOT or deletion just to clarify those, that, that functionality. Okay, now if a refund or a chargeback comes in, that is also an EOT. So EOT deletion notifications also include refund reversals. Okay, now why would we include that here? Because a, a refund or reversal will automatically trigger an EOT. Okay, the reason we have pulled refund reversal out of the mix here is so that you can pin this one down. This is very important to be able to pin this down in certain cases. For example, if you had an affiliate management application, such as IDEV Affiliate, that needed to be notified whenever a, a transaction was refunded or charged back so that it could revoke a prior commission that it credited an affiliate with, then you could, you could integrate a script that was provided by IDEV Affiliate which there is one already provided by that application, or if you had a custom application that you wanted to process a certain routine of your own under this event, you could do that. So this allows you to pin this specific, this specific form of EOT down, uh, to narrow it down to this specific type of event. Okay, and then this event obviously is for specific post-page transactions. Okay, so now let's take a look I'm going to expand payment notifications down because this is probably one of the most useful of all of these. Okay, anytime a payment is received, this notification will be fired. And all of these events, whether it's registration, sign up, payment, all of these events are associated with, re with replacement codes that, will, that S2 member supplies you with because there is information about each event that S2 member can pass over to any custom routines that you need to process. So in, inside each of these sub-panels, you will find a list of replacement codes with information that is specifically targeted toward that event. Okay, now the way I would hook into my own custom routines is by just placing the full URL. Now this does not work on relative URL, so make sure that you put in the full URL here. Okay, You put in one URL per line, an S2 member, when this event occurs, will automatically process your scripts it will automatically perform a web service HTTP connection to each of these in the order that you list them. Okay, one per line. So here we have two lines and in the first line, which is what we're going to focus on at the moment, I have this script which I have written and it's just a, a test example script and I'm passing this script whenever I'm putting the URL in I am passing the script a secret key that I'm typing directly in, and then I'm passing a variable over, and the value of that variable is going to be a replacement code that I have found in the list here. And that's going to be the transaction ID associated with this payment, because this is a payment notification. So now my script.php, whatever routine I have in that file, can be processed every time a payment occurs, and that routine can be passed over the transaction ID of the payment. Okay, so let's pause for just a moment, and I'm going to show you in the next segment what this script might contain, what it might look like. 
at a, on a basic level. Okay? We'll do that in the very next segment.